there is a problem with the artists and the licensing agencies being so greedy that you can now go to jail just for recording your favorite song on the radio. They have taken action. That <coughs> I'm trying to interpret how I should finish this article. Because it's not in my own words, it's from the Kevin Smith show. Now folks, I recommend that each and every person who likes internet radio and believes it's important for freedom of speech do these three things. One, write to ASCAP, that's A-S-C-A-P, and B-M-I, I think I think that's British music industry. I I'm not sure. Uh, write to the Sound Exchange and S E S A C and tell them you will never buy another CD by any artist they license. Tell them this is due to their greed expressed through their puppets at CARP. Number two, write to your congressmen and senators. Tell them you will not vote for them if they allow the CARP regulations to go into effect, as you will consider them to be enemies of free speech. And three, write to your favorite artists and tell them you are sorry you will not be buying their CDs any longer because their licensing agencies are bullying internet radio out of existence. <clears throat> so we'll have to see what happens after May the 15th. If internet radio is assassinated, it will be too late to do anything and freedom of speech will have been canceled. Up to you folks. As for me, folks, I like freedom, and this is where I stand. Internet radio is on the ropes, and that means freedom of speech is on the ropes. That wraps that article up. <coughs> now, the next article I want to read is by the Reverend Ted Pike, who has come on a number of radio shows lately talking about this federal hate crime bill that, which faces a vote tomorrow this is an emergency alert that I'm going to read <coughs> this is actually from Thursday of last week hate bill faces vote tomorrow by Reverend Pike House Majority Leader St Steny Hoyer announced today Thursday of last week that federal hate crime bill House Resolution 1592 is tentatively scheduled for a vote Thursday May 3rd which is tomorrow folks this appropriately is a national day of prayer Democrats control the house a wide majority which includes many Republicans favors the bill without overwhelming pressure from the American people this Orwellian legislation is certain to pass feisty Republicans resist the hate bill there is some hope. This week, <coughs> actually last week, Republicans showed astonishing and plucky resistance to the hate bill in the House Judiciary Committee. For the past two, two days, which would have been Tuesday and Wednesday of last week, Republican members of the House Judiciary Subcommittee on Crime and the full Judiciary Committee doggedly argued against House Resolution 1592. They strategized to water it down through numerous amendments. On Tuesday in the Subcommittee on Crime, Representative Luis Gommert offered a day's worth of strong objections in the House Judiciary Committee during a 10-hour marathon session on Wednesday of last week. No less than 11 Republicans offered amendments. They sought to strip such vague and dangerous terminology as, quote, gender identity, end quote, and demanded that the bill be clearly identified as a speech crime bill. At the end of the day, Democrats approved House Resolution 1592 unaltered, but the Republicans presented powerful and articulate opposition to this Orwellian free speech destroying legislation. Where did all this Republican fight come from? Since 1988, when the Anti Defamation League of Benebarath first introduced the Hate Crimes Prevention Act, Ted Pike watched Republicans blithely <coughs> let it move through Congress, confident their majority would strip it later in conference between the House and Senate. In fact, in the spring of 2004, Senator Gordon Smith, speaking to the Senate, expressed pleasure at the lack of Republican opposition. 
He saw this as evidence of the hate bill's worth. Is it any wonder the bill passed the Senate 65 to 37? A year and a half ago, hate bill amendment 2662 sailed through judiciary virtually unopposed and was approved by the House of Representatives in only 45 minutes. And it goes on and on, but you folks need to get off your butt, contact our politicians, and s <coughs> Jim Sensenbrenner uh, from Wisconsin is one of the Republicans who contested House Resolution 1592. And that's the state I'm currently from. You want any more information? Call Ted Pike at 503-631-3808. That's 503-631-3808. Pretty frightening stuff, folks. We need to wake up. I would totally take advantage of internet talk shows while you, you still can because I, I, I personally believe they're not going to be around much longer. The day is coming when free speech shows of the of, of genres like I have will come to an end. I, 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 I can see it coming. Now, in regards to the hate crime belt, I had some examples I want to read of discrimination that will soon be criminal throughout the entire Western world. This article is entitled, Global Hate Crimes Gestapo Being Created. And this is also put out by National Prayer Network, www.truthtellers.org. Christians and other lovers of truth and freedom were appalled <coughs> in October of 2004 when 11 Christians in Philadelphia were arrested, incarcerated, and threatened with 47 years in prison for the hate crime of preaching to homosexuals. They remain appalled at how Canada's thought police bureaucracy continues to harass and indict Christians and the politically incorrect. Yet imagine such legal confusion being established internationally. Envision global governance having powers to override national sovereignty and force governments to implement international hate crime laws. While it's happening right now, folks, Benebereth International, the super-powerful Jewish, religious, educational, fraternal, and charitable organization, has persuaded 55 nations in which it has 2,100 lodges and a half million Jewish members, to unite under the authority of a Central European Hate Crimes Command Center. It's called OSCE, the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. During the la last three years, <coughs> which actually would have been the beginning of uh, this century, Benebereth has organized six huge anti-hate conferences in Europe, hosting not only foreign ministers from nations worldwide, but featuring such charismatic political luminaries as Colin Powell and Ru Rudolf Giuliani. The prevailing message at these conferences, most recently held in Cor uh, Cordobo, Spain, is that anti-Semitism and other hate crimes are now at very dangerous levels worldwide. Unless the nations act immediately, enacting hate crimes laws, civilization is imperiled. <coughs> Just bear with me here, folks. According to the 